but uh, so good afternoon. Welcome to the fall October 27th meeting. And i um, going to go over a few uh, items and just kind of generally open it up to any questions. Hopefully everybody's making good progress on their, um, their action plan. And so that's what we want to go over and make sure you're all well aligned, keeping track of things as well. So that's kind of where we want to start um, this, with the agenda today. And then there is a minor uh, change when you log into the portal that I um, wanted to mention. So I'll show you that. It's not a big deal. It's just like a feedback button that they've added. Uh, topic and AR review. Um, since the, we're getting quite a, you know, we're getting some submissions going through now that people are ending, some of you are coming to your expiry dates. And so I thought a couple of them did get AERs. So I thought uh, it'd be better time spent um, looking at the AERs. Um, and I've made sure, hopefully, that you can't identify who it was. So they're, they're, the, the AR is there, but no one will know other than the person whose AR it is that it's there. So we won't have to divulge that unless, of course, you want to um, share in your experience of, of how the AER was addressed. The good news is they were all addressed and they were all marked as complete. So then uh, typical next meeting agenda, suggestions, topics, and then Q&A next uh, meeting date. All right. Um, so that's basically what we have. Um, so uh, this is just kind of in keeping with what I was just mentioning to uh, if you haven't, you know, if you've started or are within the first month or two, um, you should have already sent me a draft of your PDCA uh, kind of anticipate with the filled in anticipation of how you plan to tackle your topic. Um, filling in the plan, the do and the check. You can't do the act, of course, yet because you don't know what the results of the check is, but let me know what your plan is, what it is that you plan on doing and how you plan on checking it for each topic. And that's the draft you sent to me for review. Like I said, I can make sure you're on the right track. Um, so, you know, when you're uh, submitting topics at month, you know, seven, eight or nine, um, there's no surprise that uh, you haven't been developing it properly. So uh, it kind of, it helps to make sure that and make sure you do track your expiry date. I think we have one, come one on the list of uh, within the next thirty days. Um, so uh, keep track of your expiry date, and it, you should be submitting everything at least three weeks before your expiry date. Uh, and as we've talked about many times, um, don't wait till the last you know a uh, couple of weeks to submit all your topics at one time, right? Uh, at least for me to review, right? So uh, it's okay, you know, in, in groups like three and then two, that kind of thing is fine. But uh, to, to save all five to the last second is not a good idea in case, again, there are things you need to correct before I can send it for validation. It doesn't give you a lot of time and obviously puts me in a position where, um, you know, I have to rush to, to do the reviews. So um, so just keep track of that date and try to stay ahead, well ahead of it, all right? And we talked about last meeting, getting your packages uploaded um, and the right titles. I still get a few submissions where the packages are just evidence pieces and um, they're not marked as plan, do, check, or act, right? It's gonna be easier for me to do the review and definitely easier for the validator to do the review if your packages align uh, with your PDCA. So that's the whole idea is whenever you listen to the PDCA package list, contents list directly aligns with the content of the upload for plan, for do, for check or act. All right. And if you forgot how to do it, as I mentioned in the last meeting, there is how-to instructions for uploading the evidence. Don't forget to upload the latest version of your PDCA as well. When you're ready to submit, uh, don't leave the old one up there, upload your evidence, and then uh, I'm doing the review on an old PDCA, right? 
And that one uh, is uploaded under the implementation model tab. You can keep changing versions of that. Any questions on uh, where you are, status? Please don't save it to the last minute. You should be continuously working on your, your plan. You should all have, by now, I think a lot of you are well into, unless you just joined, um, be in your due stage. You should have pretty well written your standards, um, maybe getting them finalized, unless again, you just joined. Um, then uh, you should be doing the due. And don't forget the about eight weeks, six to eight weeks between the due and the check. All right, questions, questions, questions on this aspect of it. Everybody's well-versed. Everybody's been through it before. Nothing much has changed in the process. All right. So this is the, um, the change to the portal. When you log in on your dashboard page at the top, top, you see they've added um, feedback button, okay? And so it, it, it's, it gives you, an, a, a, it, for their aspect of it, um, to get kind of live feedback on the program, really. Because as soon as you, as you hit feedback, they want a five-star rating. And if you rated it low, what can they improve? And then there are um, a couple of questions, right? Um, depending on the stage you're in, under join, develop, demonstrate, and achieve. So once you click on, they'll ask the question specific to your journey in the program. So um, they want to get some instant feedback. And they're pretty, you know, rate the process for all of them. Um, and then there, then the other questions are kind of specific. And then they, ah, you can improve. So you know, take advantage of it. They're always looking to improve the program, give some feedback, um, and they're going to use the the data to to for future improvements. All right, so just live feedback. That's all. Doesn't affect the program process or anything else. Just a heads up when you see it. Take advantage of it. All right. Any other, any questions on this? Pretty straightforward. All right, let's take a look at a few in this, for this meeting, uh, I wanted to focus on the AERs as people are getting closer and closer to starting to submit topics. Um, to give you an idea of the kind of feedback, sometimes it's, it's common among different topics. Um, uh, you know, some of the validators probably have template reviews by now because common findings when they're doing a particular topic. So I wanted to look at a few of them. Uh, this first one is an AR on a control of hazard topic. Uh, and it, it's one that um, I think more than one of you are doing, and some of you may consider doing it um, for your next cycle. So, um, so the AR came back you know, saying uh, you didn't provide uh, a specific control measures to each type of hazard. So, so the submission identified all the different uh, hazard, uh, slip, trip, fall hazards, right? From different placements, from the office, whatever, but missed including the controls that uh, you're going to implement for each one of those, okay? So if you're doing a control hazard topic like that and you've identified the hazard, um, they wanna see which of the hierarchy of controls you are using to address the hazard. So in this case, because there are multiple sources of slip, trip and fall, there'll be multiple examples where the hazard exists and multiple approaches to the controls. So uh, make sure you include that in the, standard, the procedure, okay? And of course, it has to cover head office, branch locations, client sites as well. Always want to make sure, you know, that you apply it to your, your offices and your client sites, right? 
Uh, in the do, um, the, you can see the comments here. Um, once you did number one in plan, make sure that everyone's trained as applicable, you know, depending on their, their work location on their hazards. So the training um, here and it has to be specific to the workers exposed to the specific type of hazards. So some of them may just be office, your office staff um, and branch employees, as, as she said, and then there'll be client sites specific trip to profile hazards. So if you include uh, the training on this hazard as part of your overall orientation, then at least it's all covered for all of them, unless there's something very, very specific for a placement that they want to see that training has been provided, right? Um, so because it's it's such a generic hazard, it is something that you can most likely cover the training um, for everybody, especially your placements um, through the orientation, right? Uh, if they don't see that evidence, then you're going to get an AR just like this, where people trained on the hazard. Okay, and include what training was provided to who and when. And that you can actually do in the narrative, right? When you're writing under the um, the do, you can say, you know, we trained all our office staff, da 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 da, on their you know office related subject, and our temporary staff are trained you know, through our orientation program, we added the slide um, and then you attach that slide, right? And then um, however you track training, screenshot of the training completed, attendance sheets, uh, sign-in sheet, however you do it, it's fine. All right. Hi, James. Yes. It's Desiree, how are you? Hi, good, how are you doing? I'm good. So um, I got an AER on my um, uh, ergonomics for MSIs um, last Friday, actually. Um, and so the auditor that I had, she kind of gave me a heads up on exactly what you have on the screen for slips, trips, and falls. Same thing. So it's another control of hazard topic. Right. So she 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 said, by the way, I noticed that you have this for your next one. So focus on exactly what you have on the screen. Right. She reiterated yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So so in the plan, list all the different types of hazards, like you know, related to that topic. So if it's uh was it for office setup, you know, so you talk about the uh, eye strain, neck, shoulder, uh, arm, hand for the mouse, like all the different um, hazards that could leave, lead to that uh, injury, right? So same, yeah. same concept, same concept. Yeah. And identify yeah. the control, then you train everybody as applicable. So again, if you don't do any, any um, office placements at all, then it, you know, it won't, it may not apply to temps. Right, but if you do office placements, whether it's a home office or a general office, and you have your, then it applies to everybody, right? So that's how they'll look at it. All right. So that one, there was no uh, the check and act uh, was fine because it or I didn't include anything because it looked like the gaps were only on plan and do. So here's uh, competency. Okay, which is uh, um, another another topic. So there was an AER uh, on that. And this brings out, uh, again, the refocus on making sure uh, that your standard and procedure that you develop um, includes the topic requirements, because the validator here reiter reiterated the, the four main topic requirements, right? And, you know, some they have to be in your in your uh, um, standard in one way or another, okay? Do you have to use the exact same wording? It helps, but you don't have to, right? As long as they can see that you included all of these requirements, okay? Uh, that you show that, you know, the, the you did a tax competency, identify task competency. So for different tasks, and you're gonna see that in, in, the, um, in the, the continuation of the plan uh, feedback, 
um, will require different competencies. Is there a spreadsheet or a form or something you created that shows the competency expectations by task? Okay. Any certifications, right, that are required? First aid, forklift, working at heights, um, you know, depending on the types of placements of you, any safety certifications or licenses that are required as part of competency, right? And then that training needs analysis. So what training do people need uh, for each of the different placement positions? And you can group them. I mean, you know, it's not for by client. It's if you do uh, office placements, you do um, light labor, heavy labor, right? So each of those would be like a needs analysis for competency. And then include uh, the regular review. That was part of, that's part of the topic requirements, right? So uh, in addition, you can see that um, the, the completion of a training needs analysis, so it wasn't done. So that was missing as one of the requirements. Um, certifications licensing were also missing. So those two items were not included. The, there was no evidence that those items of the topic requirements were carried out. Okay. And it must include obviously uh, your management supervisors, branch personnel, contractors assigned to work for your clients. So again, this topic definitely covers um, internal, external. So focus, make sure you, you implement the topic requirements, right? Um, and then they said to um, some support documentation um, that uh, describes the company role responsibility, the process for conducting the training. Need. So they focused again, 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 training needs analysis and identifying and documenting. So who does it? So it should be included in your procedure. Who does the training needs analysis? Um, who, who carries out uh, the identification for the safety competency requirements for all the positions? And uh, hint, hint, refer to topic guide for additional guidance. So that's why I always say, before you start working on any topic, look at the topic guide, see what the requirements are, right? So this one, there was actually feedback on, because the gap in plan was, was, was pretty significant, there's obviously gonna be do check and act because um, you kind of have to, now that you're gonna include it in your standard, do the training needs analysis, okay? Do the competency requirements and upload all the evidence. Okay, and they give examples, just like I mentioned, uh, a certification, first aid, forklift. Um, if you have a committee, joint uh, certification, anything that where they get some sort of a form or certificate would be identified with those tasks. Okay, ensure competency requirements have been communicated and training is provided to all personnel. So. Anyone who is supposed to track that should be trained on their role in the competency as far as part of the training on this particular topic. All right. And your training needs analysis, competency requirement must reflect task positions. And again, they include the office branches and client sites. All right. So this, this uh, AR was addressed, person did what was asked. Uh, and then even on the, uh, sometimes when they do uh, always read the results of your, your validations because they will put in OPIs, opportunities for improvement. So you've met the minimum requirements, but they, they sometimes uh, include an OPI. And so even on the revalidation, there was an OPI, um, uh, which is not mandatory because it probably goes beyond maybe the requirements, but um, just an opportunity for improvement. Um, and, and they said, it's not clear whether training completion is verified 
to enhance the competency training. So, so in general, they said, do you have a way to, to verify that the training specifically, especially if it's done at the client sites has been done? Because that's it. They, they go on to say it, 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 it's a liability and tracking and getting confirmation that your people have been trained is your due diligence. Because if something happens uh, and it comes out they weren't trained, not only will the client site be held accountable, but you as the employer as well will be held accountable because it's not it's your employee that wasn't trained. And you 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 blindly relied on the client site to do the training without getting any type of confirmation that that person actually completed that specific training. So they even say, you know, uh, implement an audit strategy to ensure competency training requirements at the client sites is regularly reviewed, verified, and recorded. So are your people getting trained? Okay. I highly recommend that verification of competency training requirements for high-risk work activities environments be your initial primary focus. So that's opportunity for improvement. And, you know, I have to agree that that it is a liability if uh, you won't, you can't prove your employee was trained and something goes wrong. There's a serious injury and investigation from the ministry, right? So, all right. So those are the kind of the, uh, an example of an OPI, right? Uh, even, so remember, even if you get all topics completed on a validation, always go in the portal and read the report. Sometimes it'll, if there were, if it was fine and they have nothing to add, They'll just say, thank you, all the topic met requirements or topic met requirements, but there is opportunity for improvement and there'll, there'll be an entry. Okay, so go in and I encourage you to go and look at it. There's some good feedback that could be helpful for future uh, submissions. All right, then obviously, because you're going to make so many changes, you got to go redo the check. So you got to do the evaluation on the program, roles and responsibilities. And again, the check is the overall evaluation of the program. Um, evaluate competency program term if roles, responsibilities, and procedures are understood, affected, and implemented. Did you carry out all of the requirements? And because you're going to have to add some requirements on this one, you almost have to do an, uh, redo the check. Okay, and because you're going to probably redo the check, then they always say, based on the revised check, um, if you have opportunities for improve, uh, um, as uh, they they will be in the act, if applicable. Okay, so a heads up for anybody looking at this topic may have this topic. Um, what the expectations will be. Questions? On it. Just jump in with any questions. Just don't forget to unmute yourself <laughs> or else I won't be able to hear the question. Um, I can open the chat if you insist. I don't see anything in the chat right now, but I do have it open now in case you prefer to type. So the next one is uh, leadership and commitment, uh, a level one topic, um, and and um, and so um, uh, there was there was some some feedback on this, um, you know that the the submission included a policy, um, the health and safety responsibility policy, right, and. Um, if you date your policy, then it it's going to show whether or not you do annual reviews. So the policy statement that's signed by your CEO, which is different than your 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 written policy, your procedure, uh, needs to be by law reviewed every year. So if there's a discrepancy, you know you've got an, an updated uh, an old dated um, statement of of uh, say, you know, signed by the, the CEO of 2017, it shows that you haven't updated it. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, even if you don't make changes, um, uh, you should change the date if you date it. 
because uh, it needs an annual review, right? Um, the policy, okay, because this is under plan, was missing who in the company was assigned, uh, at least at the senior manager, overall responsibility for health and safety. Even if, even if, you know, that the it's delegated to you, but who do you report to? So who's the senior, you know, does it go to a senior person within the organization that health and safety reports into, right? Um, so apparently the, the submission was missing who that is, okay? Um, and make sure, again, the member's guidelines, when it comes to the policy statement, there are some minimal requirements. So uh, it has to include those. So that was missing. Okay. And then training, uh, make sure that all senior management personnel in Ontario have received training on their responsibilities. Because this is leadership. So the main focus here obviously is going to be on your uh, this one is not going to have as much implication to your placements, more and more so internal and internal training, um, your internal general policy statement. Okay. And then the check needs to, again, look at the topic. The goal of evaluation determine whether the roles and responsibilities standards and procedures established are measured, understood, implemented, and effective. So how can you evaluate whether your senior leaders know their health and safety responsibilities? And there are a number of ways that you can uh, do that. Um, review, it says, your evaluation process could include review of documents, records, surveys, interviews, to verify that... Um, senior management understand. So there, there, there's all sorts of options to do that. Okay, if you use some sort of a checklist, you still should describe at least in the narrative, what you measured and who, uh, what you reviewed and the summary of the results. So if you don't include that in the evaluation, you might get a, a, a an AER, looking for that. It's not clear who, what, when, how, and results. All right. And because it, whenever there's a, um, a gap in check, they always include the act. It's the same statement all the time. Because now you're going to have to fix up the check and there might be new findings that you didn't have before. All right, those are hopefully some AER um, reviews. Um, hopefully you find it helpful. You can see what validators are looking for. And as Desiree, sometimes it could be transferable to different uh, topics, especially the control of hazard topics. That's gonna be, it is gonna be a common thing where they're looking at, did you identify all the hazards? Um, did you, uh, implement, did you identify controls? And then how did you implement the controls for that hazard, right? It's the control hazard topic. Which of the hierarchy did you apply? I believe it's page 45 is the um, control of hazard topic. Okay, got a question uh, in the chat. Can you confirm when an employer can start a new plan. Ours is expired, but is pending closure and, oh, and on-site validation. So, um, if you you got oh, so we so this is the first one I added. Usually, if you're doing an on-site, I would have got a copy of a letter. So they must have just informed you because I didn't get uh, a copy um, or a notification. They usually notify the provider as well. So. Um, so let me see. Um, if because they changed the rules, um, and all your topics. So let me confirm. All yeah. So it's pending closure. So pending closure means all the topics have been validated, and you got the results. Maybe all complete. Um, 
and all that the, you were selected for an on-site, okay? So you should be able, if, you, if all the topics have been validated, even with a pending closure, and even now before your expiry date, because in your case, you're, you're, uh, you did expired anyways, you should be able to start a new plan now. All right. Yeah, if you're past the expiry date, no problem. You should be able. So um, if you go into the portal and the topic selection uh, tab is active, it means you can start a, a plan. Okay. If for some reason the topic selection is not there, send me an email and I can double check why it's not open to you. Right. Because if you recall, one of the changes they made, I think earlier on this year, is once an action plan has been completed. So it means all the all your um, you submitted all your topics and the they have all been validated. OK, you can start your next action plan. Even before your expiry date. So people can uh, don't have to wait till the expiry date to start an act, the next action plan. OK. So. Um, but you have to complete all the topics, submit all the topics, and have all the topics finish their their uh, desktop validation. If if you're pending uh, on site, my understanding is that doesn't matter. You can still start a new action plan. So. Um, So let me know, let me know um, if your topic selection button on the portal is not active. Uh, another question, I don't know if you knew that WCB is assigning the same auditor per account. Yeah, they've been trying to do that, at least on the account. Uh, I've been pushing for them to assign at least one or two validators to, for example, to all of our submissions. So one or two validators for the temp industry so that we get some consistency as well. Uh, I, know, I don't know if they're, they're doing that because I, I do look at the names when I read the, um, the reports from validators, um, but definitely uh, the per account is something they've been trying to do for a while now. So you don't have different validators validating different topics. So that's that's something that they've been yeah they've they've implemented, uh, but I've been pushing at least just because our industry is so unique to to have and they can't do it for one validator because there's just too many so maybe too many submissions, um, but um, you know at least maybe two narrow it down to two instead of all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, confirm. She seemed to confirm what that there are only two or three validators for our industry. And for the account, I know, but for the industry was another different question. Okay, it's per account, yeah. Per account is something they've been trying to do for everybody. All right. Any um, comments, suggestions for next agenda? Uh, topics as usual that you want to review. I'll keep an eye out for uh, for um, more AERs. Um, did you find that helpful? Reviewing the AERs, uh, can you type yes, no, or 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 uh, uh, or not applicable? <laughs> good. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I'll keep an eye out. I think. I, you know, I think it's something to share amongst everybody, especially if there are common things that we can learn for that apply to different topics. And then, you know, you may, um, you may be selecting those topics next cycle. So it'll help you for the future as well. So I'll keep an eye out of, of those. And if there aren't any new ones, then I'll switch back to our list of uh, 
topic reviews. It's hard to ever tell how much detail specifically they're looking for until we have more and more AERs or, or reviews come in and, and more experience with the topics, right? Which is one of the comments, they do a survey of providers and that was one of the comments I gave them um, when we finished the survey. They do one every year that the they should be very clear on the topic submission requirements, almost um, create a checklist for the types of things that should be submitted under plan, do, check, and act for uh, in, you know, a lot more detailed than the samples. Uh, the samples are very generic and the samples um, you know, not you know, sometimes don't apply to all different kinds of employers. So, so a little bit more detail, something along the samples, but reformatted into much more kind of a checklist of things they want to see for plan, for do, for check and act for each topic. So I thought, you know, that was my feedback for them. All right. Um, So again, if you have if you have anything now, that just type it into the chat. Any topics, or uh, I can add it to my list, or just shoot me an email. All right. And I know I answered a few questions already, so we were kind of jumped into the Q and A. But are there any other uh, questions? If you are, uh, the only other comment I'll make is if you are part of the small business initiative, um, again, make sure you stay on track with your topics. Um, there is an opportunity if you're efficient to finish, um, you know, again, finish one action plan, start another one uh, within the double rebate program, which is set to expire December, 2023. So, um, you can take advantage of the fact that there's no limit on the number of action plans that can be completed um, in a row, right? So that limit of the three, one every 365 days is gone. So um, you can start as soon as you actually properly complete the validation of uh, the desktop validation of one action plan, ready to start another action plan. So, um, especially for a small business, because of the double rebate, you can take advantage of another set of topics for double rebate. So just keep that in mind. All right. Uh, I don't see any new questions yet. And while you're thinking about questions, I'm going to look at uh, the November calendar here. Just want to verify. Okay, uh, November Thursday, November twenty fourth. Uh, same time, same channel. Okay. Okay, uh, question, person without a mic <laughs> or mic broken. I know what you want for Christmas, um, unless it's just a software issue. Uh, your action plan closed in September. So if your action plan closed in September, um, totally, which means no outstanding um, on-site validation or anything, then you should get your rebate the end of November. And I think it, usually they come out like the last week of November. The rebate run should uh, come out for plans that closed uh, anywhere from beginning of August to the end of October. And that would be your window. So November, 2022. All right. Yep. 
it all depends when your plans close, right? And the rebate schedule that I sent out uh, a while back still applies. It goes all the way to plan to uh, action plan closures, um, January 29, 2023. I haven't seen the next one yet, but we're still good till closures of 2023. We'll get their checks the end of February. So that's the next window. If you missed October 30th, the next window will be to close by January 29th which means rebate run last week of February, 2023. That's the last window that I have published. Uh, usually they have already published the rebate cycle. So I'll probably ask, usually they do it in August. So um, I think they're trying to kind of figure out uh, a couple of things with the small business initiative because that one is having, has one, two, three rebate cycles now. So <laughs> they do a separate rebate run for the thousand dollars when small business joins. They do um, the regular rebate run for completed topics. And then they do another rebate run for the double rebate. So they're trying to think consolidate those. So maybe that's why there's been a delay in, in the rebate schedule. But so at least you're good. For, I think a lot of you um, have plans expiring between now and, and January 2023. So you'll fall into the next, into the February one. And if your plan is after that, then uh, we'll have to wait to see what the actual rebate schedule, the next rebate schedule is. As soon as I know, you know, I send it out. All right, good question. Um, so we're good for the next meeting, 1 p.m. on the 24th. And uh, and as always, Jennifer, very efficient in sending out the notice so it gets into your calendar. So you should be seeing that come through uh, very shortly. And don't forget, in the meantime, any questions, comments, help with anything uploading package preparations or anything like that um you know where to find me an email or a phone call uh, i can set up one-on-one -on -one, uh, zoom meetings anytime you need so to to go through anything um so please uh, let me know a lot of you do take advantage of that that's what i'm here for um just a, a another note reminder when you are submitting topics for validation don't send me the evidence packages, right? Uh, those get uploaded. Um, I'll look at it when you submit for review, uh, the topic for review. And remember, when you market review, it's just me. It's not going to validate it. All right. So um, once I review it, um, I give you the feedback on it if something is missing or or not enough evidence was included. Um, and then, of course, I review the latest version of the PDCA that you uploaded. So you don't need to email me the evidence packages. All right. I'll look at them on the portal. All right. If there are no other questions, I will uh, let you go and give you 15 minutes back. Thank you for your time and um, take care. We'll talk to you uh, next month. Quick update and uh, uh, and we'll go from there.